Hi, everyone. Welcome to the College Essay Guy virtual college road trip. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, to please make sure you submit those using the Q&A button. You can type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. Again, that's at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. We are currently in session C1, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from the University of California, Irvine. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Andrea, I'm with UC Irvine. I worked with UC Irvine for eight years and it's a great institution to represent. I've also worked throughout the UC system. So uh, some of my perspective tonight comes from loving the UC system as a whole. It's a great place to study. Um, it's a great place to attend a research university. Attending a research university means we're gonna teach you how to critically think no matter what your field is. But at UCI, you just get to do it in this really beautiful location. So UCI is halfway between LA and San Diego, about 10 minutes from Newport Beach, uh, 70 and sunny, 75 and sunny really year round. Great ocean breezes, 20 minutes to Disneyland, just a really great place to study and learn. Um, we are also a really great place academically. Um, we are in the top 10 public schools in the entire country. So we're really um, proud of that high rise to um, to that top 10, partly because we're only 56 years young. So we're a pretty young university to be, to be in that top accoladed group. Something really unique about our campus in the UC system, but I would even say in the country, and I've visited schools throughout the country, is that we are built in a circle. And that was really intentional. So when they built UCI, they built it in a perfect one mile circle uh, to all of your classroom buildings. So to get uh, from one side of Ring Road, all the way through the park to the other side of Ring Road is about a 15 or 20 minute walk. And then our freshman residence halls, which house about 5,000 students, so about 85% or so of our freshman class are all right on that circle as well. So the reason we were built in a circle is because they wanted to build a university in our modern age that easily connected different disciplines together. So our faculty are expected to approach things from a very interdisciplinary way. And we love and our students do too. Uh, but kind of the, the outcomes of building in a circle is that it's easy to get around you see a lot of people over and over again. So it's a lot of friendly faces, even with a large campus. So as you can see from those numbers, we're a pretty large university, over 30,000 undergraduates and growing uh, 6,500 graduate students. However, um, of those 6,500 graduate students, only about half are on this part of the campus. The other 3,000 or so are over in our medical school, which is offsite. UCI does have its own medical school, its own hospital, which are just a little ways away. So um, really on this circle is about 33, 3,400, 33, 34,000 students. So that sounds like a big number, but it feels smaller when you're on the campus. What is also great about this circular design is that in the middle, we have a beautiful park. When you ask our students what their favorite thing about UCI is, many will mention Aldridge Park. You can see a little bit of what it looks like right here behind me, but it's got 11,000 trees. It's a great place to study. We have uh, kind of involvement fairs throughout the year there. So our 600 clubs will set up tables and really um, be in that space. But we also have career fairs and talent shows and concerts in that space too. So lots and lots of opportunities to engage. Uh, great Wi-Fi too. So lots of study time um, in that space. What are the majors that we're best known for? Well, we're probably best known um, in kind of the uh, biological sciences, partly because of that medical school. You can make anything on your screen here into a pre-med program at UCI, but where we do see most of our pre-med or pre-health students is in one of our 10 biology majors, our nursing school, our pharmaceutical science school, um, our uh, public health program, lots of great things that are so applicable to what's going on in the world today. Uh, so we're really uh, lucky to have um, established these programs a long time ago. The other area we're probably really re well, well regarded in is our computer science and engineering programs. We are the only UC with its own school of computer science, which means we attract a lot of top level faculty into that program. Both our computer science and engineering programs 
have students do a senior design project where a nearby company hires you to solve some sort of problem. So it's a great resume builder, but you'll actually find those throughout these programs. Some other top programs at UCI, we have 14 different languages that we offer. We have a top five criminology program, a top 10 dance major in the country. Uh, we have one of only three undergraduate business schools in the UC system with lots of minors, even if you don't get in as a major, which is a little bit competitive at UCI. So really lots of great programs to choose from and all with that interdisciplinary focus where you're gonna bring ideas from all over the place into critically think through problems in your field. And finally, a little bit more about our location. Not only is it 75 and sunny and near the beach, but it's also really well thought out. The city of Irvine is a planned city. They planned it so that it'd be easy to get around in your foreground of your city where the campus is, you see a beautiful green park in the middle. And then in the back, you see Newport Beach. What you don't see just to the right of your screen is the Irvine Business District. This has one third of all Fortune 500 companies have an office right in Irvine. So within 10 minutes, tons of internships, and we do help you incorporate these right into your program. So lots of ways to build that resume while you're in school, lots of great hands-on learning with the companies you see on the screen, but with literally thousands more. Some other highlights is we do a ton of uh, study abroad, other opportunities to do co-curriculars um, that really help you invest in your education and learn a little bit better about what you're studying and then apply it in the real world. I want to close out UCI on our anteater spirit. So we are the anteaters. We're the only anteaters in the country. You see students in the picture here doing a little that, that, that. Um, this is a great mark of our school spirit and our school pride, but it's not just about our NCAA D1 sports teams. It's really about our esports and our club sports um, and our intramurals. What you see in the picture here is us winning a Guinness World Record. Um, we hold four Guinness World Records, including the world's largest dodgeball game, which is what this picture is from. So tons of school spirit that doesn't necessarily have to fit in the box of sports. Uh, it's that and so much more. Uh, lots of ways to get involved as well, over 600 student clubs. So everything from academics to sororities and fraternities, cultural clubs, uh, extracurricular clubs that help you give back to the community as well. So lots and lots of ways to get involved. And finally, the application, it is $70 per UC application. We do share our application with all the UC campuses. Uh, so you will fill that out in the month of November if you're a rising senior. Uh, thank you so much. I look forward to answering your questions in the Q&A and uh, feel free to take a snapshot of this, but I'll drop the link in the chat as well. Have a great night. Great, thank you. The next representative is from the University of the Pacific. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Carlos Hernandez. Um, I'm here representing University of the Pacific. I am also a proud alumni as well. Um, so to give you a little bit of a, of a history here of the University of the Pacific, we were founded back in 1851, making us the oldest charter university here in California. We have uh, three different campuses. Uh, Stockton is the primary campus. Uh, this is where all of our undergraduate students will come uh, to earn their degree. Uh, in Sacramento, which is 45 minutes north of us, we have our McGeorge School of Law. So if you want to become a lawyer, we have our own law school and our own pre-law program as well. Um, in San Francisco, about an hour and a half, we have our own dental school as well. Um, in terms of our student population, we're roughly around 3,700, so pretty small class sizes. Uh, average class size is um, 18, and we have a 13 to 1 student. In terms of the areas of study, we have a variety of different programs. Uh, two of our most competitive programs would definitely be our pre-dental and our pre-pharmacy program because they are accelerated. Uh, students can be accepted into a five-year, six-year, or a seven-year track. Uh, a couple of our other noteworthy programs are within our School of uh, Engineering and Computer Science. What makes us unique is that we uh, have a fully supported uh, co-op program, which means that students that are part of the engineering uh, department will actually participate four to seven month internship where they will also get paid as well. Uh, we'll be able to use what they're learning in their class, uh, get paid, and then bring back that experience to finish their senior year. Um, and that way they'll be able to graduate with a degree and seven months of experience under their belt. Uh, regardless of the program though, we have a variety of different areas where students can gain hands-on experience. And that's kind of the marquee at University of the Pacific is regardless of what area of study you're focusing on, we want to make sure that you have actual experience under your belt through either co-op opportunities, internships, uh, research opportunities as well. 
In terms of our career outcomes, 91% uh, of our 2019 graduates are employed or in graduate school. 93% are working in a field that's related to the career objective. Uh, we have such a high percentage of this because all of you will be given a faculty advisor from day one who will work with you um, throughout your, your college career to make sure that you understand what classes you're taking, prerequisites in case you're, lo you're looking to pursue a graduate program afterwards, um, or to can, again, catch, kind of get you into those internship one in four of our graduates will pursue graduate or professional school, and we will assist you with that as well. Um, in, term, in terms of our student life, we are a division one school. We have 17 men and women's sports teams, more than 150 clubs and organizations that also are intramural sports and club teams as well. Um, in terms of paying for Pacific, we offer both merit-based scholarships as well as uh, need-based assistance as well too. So the thing that I would recommend is making sure that you always complete your FAFSA. You'll see the code below there. Um, and then one of the noteworthy aspects as well is specific alumni earn the second highest salaries of all senior colleges as well uh, within California. And that's a big part of it uh, comes because of the high focus that we provide for internship opportunities as well. So um, there's a big correlation between getting hands-on experience and obviously being able to demand a higher salary when you, when you graduate and you start your first uh, uh, college up, uh, career opportunity afterwards as well. Um, in terms of how to apply, so you can apply through us through the Common App or through our own Pacific application where you can find on our website. Uh, early action is November 15th. For any of you that are interested in pre-pharmacy or pre-dentistry, your heart deadline is November 15th. So you must apply before November 15th to be considered for those two specific uh, um, programs. Um, we'll require your transcripts and we are gonna be running test optional at least for this following year as well. Um, regular admission uh, would be January 15th as well. And we do take our rolling applications as well. Uh, to contact us, you can always reach out to admission at pacific.edu um, or you can reach out to me as well directly, Carlos Hernandez at thernandez3 at pacific.edu. That's pretty much me. We'll pass it on to the next person. Great, very helpful, thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions to please submit those through the Q&A. Our representatives are here and available to answer any questions you have. And if you have a specific question to also note the school name. Our next representative is from Woodbury University. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Ramsey and welcome to Woodbury University. Woodbury University is a small liberal arts school located in Burbank, California. We have about 1200 students, um, both undergrad and graduate. So we're located, like I said, about 20 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. We're also located about 10 minutes from Hollywood and within minutes from many major studios, including Warner Brothers, Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Universal Studios, and much more. Um, our average class size is very small. It's about 15 students. And that means you're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors um, and a lot of opportunities for collaboration. All of our students at Woodbury University are required to have an internship. Um, and about 90 to 95 percent of our students are hired within their field within six months of graduation. So we do value a very hands-on practice-based education here at Woodbury. Our nationally ranked programs include our architecture program, interior design, animation, graphic design, and game art and design. And about 85 percent of our students do receive financial aid and that average package is about $21,000. And then some other majors that we offer at Woodbury include fashion design, fashion marketing, filmmaking, professional writing, public safety administration, as well as a unique three plus one degree, which allows students to get their bachelor's and their MBA all within four years. So as I mentioned, we are a very hands-on school. We do provide a lot of resources for our students. You're gonna get a lot of practice-based education, a lot of experience, um, and you will have that internship before you graduate. So that's one of the unique perks of Woodbury. And so these are just some of our student resources that we offer. 
The great thing about Woodbury and being a student here is that you don't have to wait until your sophomore or junior year to start your major specific courses. You start those immediately as a freshman and none of your classes are impacted. So as a filmmaking student, for instance, within the first week, you'll have your hands on film equipment and you'll be filming. Um, as a fashion design student, you'll be using our industrial sewing machines and designing within your first week. Um, and then as an architecture student, within your first week of school, you will have access to our making complex, which has all of these things listed for you as a student for resources for you to create and build. So we're very hands-on. Our application requirements are listed here below. So we look, we try to look at a holistic approach to your application. So we're not only looking at your GPA, we're also looking at your um, your personal essay as well as well as your letters of recommendation and your portfolio if it that if that is required. So we do require a 2.75 GPA for regular admission. And then if you have anywhere from a 2.25 to 2.74, you can also be placed in our transition track or our bridge program. And those are just additional resources for students to ensure that you are successful and to make sure that you're transitioning to our academic culture here at Woodbury. A digital portfolio is required for our animation students and it is recommended for graphic design students and we are test optional. We don't require a personal statement but it is highly recommended. And then this is just kind of a breakdown of our merit-based scholarships. Um, our merit-based scholarships are offered yearly for each year that you are enrolled full-time. You will receive this as long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA. If you meet this GPA requirement when you apply, you are guaranteed these scholarships. So it's a pretty nice package. Um, we do also offer a match program for any federal and state grants. Um, in addition to our merit-based scholarships, we also offer additional scholarships, and that includes um, school-specific scholarships that you can apply for, as well as WISE scholarships, which gives students money for study away and for internship and work experience and civic engagement. And we also do have a social justice scholarship fund. So if you have any questions, uh, this is my information. I encourage you to reach out at any time. I do also encourage you to, um, to, to sign up for a virtual guided campus tour. We are also, I'm very excited to announce, we're also offering in-person tours now for our California residents. And you can also connect with current students and connect with us on social media. Um, and if you have any additional questions, you can find us on YouTube or you can find extra information on our website. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Our next representative is from California Lutheran University. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sheldon. I'm one of the admission counselors at California Lutheran University. We are a small private liberal arts university located in Thousand Oaks, California. We are situated halfway between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. In terms of Cal Lutheran by numbers, we have about 3,000 undergraduates, so you'll definitely feel at home at Cal Lutheran. You'll definitely have a great support system as well. Um, we do have a really small student to faculty ratio of about 15 to 1, and our average class size is about 17. Uh, we do consider ourselves a fairly diverse institution. Um, although Lutheran is our middle name, uh, our students come from 39 faith and non-faith backgrounds, so you don't necessarily have to be Lutheran to attend Cal Lutheran. Uh, also, 27% of our students come from under, um, are the first in their family to go to college, um, and 53% of our students come from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, and as of 2016, we are a Hispanic serving institution, uh, so we have a lot of support systems available for uh, all of our students on campus. Although we are a California school, we have students coming from 42 different states and 49 countries. Uh, we are situated very close to the ocean, um, so really great opportunities there, both for learning as well as um, getting out and exploring. 
Um, also, overall, 97% of our students either get a full-time job in their field or go on to grad school within nine months. So our students are very well prepared for life after Cal Lutheran. In terms of our uh, programs that we do offer, we are really big on experiential learning. Uh, so what that means at Cal Lutheran is uh, study abroad, internships, and research. Our students have gone to over, over 80 different countries uh, with our study abroad program. We're really excited to announce that starting from this fall, we will be sending students out again uh, for study abroad, um, pending uh, local regulations there. Um, we also have over 500 students doing an internship. Uh, so that's uh, really because of our students are able to uh, get high level internships because of our location. Um, being really next to uh, the Los Angeles area, we're able to get our students those high level internships to get their hands uh, on experience in uh, the field that they might want to uh, get into. Uh, we're also really big on research. So although we are a liberal arts school, research is something that's a really big part of Cal Lutheran. Uh, we definitely equip you with the opportunities to um, get the skills needed for research um, and to, to conduct your research as well. Uh, and all of our research done at Cal Lutheran is done by undergraduate students specifically. Uh, so you won't have to compete with graduate level students uh, to do the, the research that you want to do. Uh, in terms of our uh, housing situation on campus, we are uh, fully suite style. So for those of you coming from outside of the area, we do uh, provide housing all four years for our students. Uh, all of our res halls are suite style. So two bedrooms, a bathroom and a common area. All of our residence halls come with air conditioning, heating, Wi-Fi, cable, so everything is all included. Uh, we even have free parking for all students, both commuter and residential students. Overall in California, we are ranked 12th best in terms of our housing, uh, so we're really proud of that as well. We also have a various dining facilities, including the Habit Grill, um, the largest Starbucks in Ventura County, and Jamba Juice right on campus. In terms of our application process, we are on the common application that will open on August 1st. Uh, we do require your official transcripts to be submitted as well. Um, starting from uh, 2020 moving forward, we are fully test optional. So uh, we don't require any test scores for admission or financial aid or scholarship consideration. Uh, so uh, we don't require that at all. Uh, if you do want to submit that, we will take that as part of our holistic review. Uh, we also uh, re require one layer of recommendation. Um, to, so um, it's very easy to put all your application materials together. We are very holistic when it comes to our review process. So we don't look at just GPA and test scores and say yes or no. We'll look at your personal statements, layers of recommendation, um, and uh, optional interviews as well. Um, some important dates to remember. So like I mentioned, August 1st is when the common application does open. Um, we all, uh, the application is due um, November 1st for non-binding early action uh, candidates. We also have a regular decision happening on January 1st. Um, for notification of admission, we notify students on January 15th for early action and April 1st for regular decision. Uh, in terms of scholarships and uh, financial aid, 97% of our students receive some kind of financial assistance at Cal Lutheran, so we are a, very, a fairly uh, affordable option. Uh, we have our merit-based scholarships just for applying to Cal Lutheran. We have our presidential scholarship for students who apply by our early action deadline. Uh, we also have a public price promise for students who are interested in the UC system here in California. Uh, we also have visual performing arts scholarship as well. Uh, overall, our average financial aid package is over half of our total cost of attendance. So we do have a lot of financial aid, not just only federal and state aid, but we also have institutional aid to help bridge that gap as well. Uh, if you have any questions um, moving forward after this presentation, we definitely would love to have a conversation with you. Feel free to reach out to the Office of Undergraduate Admission. Uh, we'll definitely um, connect you with your admission counselor uh, specific to your region so that you'll be able to get uh, the best information as well. I'm also going to put my information in the chat feature after this. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Before we hear from our next two representatives, just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to please feel free to submit those using the Q&A. Um, any question at all about the college application process, about the college search process or anything, um, or anything of that nature, or even if you have a specific question, um, our representatives are here to help. We please, we encourage you to also include the school name. Our next presenter is from the University of Redlands. All righty, hello everyone. Um, my name is Lucia Garcia. I'm an admissions counselor at University of Redlands. And so I'll be telling you a little bit about uh, the U of R. So we are a liberal arts university in Southern California. 
We are located 60 miles east of Los Angeles. So we're close to beaches, mountains, desert, LA, all those wonderful places in Southern California. I'll show you a map in a little bit. Um, so here's our map of where we are located. So like I said, we're close to beaches, mountains, desert, LA, Anaheim, all those wonderful places that you would want to consider home when you are in college. Um, so while we have really great proximity to really amazing things in Southern California, um, Redlands in itself is a really great location to call home. Um, we have music festivals, we have the San Bernardino Museum in Redlands, California, and we're named one of the best college towns by AAA Magazine a few years ago. So definitely a really great place um, to live and to learn. So like I said earlier, University of Redlands is a private um, liberal arts university. And so that is really um, our pride point that we are a liberal arts institution. So we really focus on um, teaching the heart and the mind of the scholar. So that's really a well-rounded education. Um, and so that's really the point of being at University of Redlands. So we'll talk about that. Um, but we're also a small university. We have 2,500 undergraduates. So pretty teeny tiny. Um, we do have um, graduate programs as well. Um, so those aren't necessarily located on our main campus in Redlands, California. Um, those are about 2,500 students as well. Um, we're a very residential university. Most students live on campus all four years. We do have a four-year housing guarantee to match our four-year graduation guarantee. And we really do have a commitment to being an inclusive campus. Um, recently, University of Redlands was named an HSI, so Hispanic Serving Institution, which we are really excited about um, to, to continue to be offer, um, offering services to all of our students, specifically our Hispanic students. Um, and again, our mission statement is to educate the heart and the mind of the scholar. So really placing value on what happens within the classroom walls, as well as what happens outside of the classroom equally. Um, so student life at University of Redlands. So like I said, most people live on campus. So we're pretty, um, pretty dynamic little university. Um, we do have over 100 clubs and organizations that you can be a part of that does include Greek life. Um, so if you're interested in joining a fraternity or sorority, great, just know that we have those options. About a quarter of our students will be involved in something like that. Um, something really important to know about University of Redlands is that we do have a really huge commitment to service. Um, service is fully integrated into everything that we we do. Um, it is actually a graduation requirement. You must complete 80 hours of service before you graduate from the institution. Um, and what that means for you is really different than from the rest of the students, right? So it's going to be a really intimate experience. It's really based on um, educating our students, again, within the classroom walls, but also taking experience from the community and adding to, you know, your, your um, wheelhouse of experiences. Um, we also do have an outdoor programs, which is really popular. Like I said, we're close to really amazing things. So if you're interested in like rock repelling or you want to go hiking at Joshua Tree or you just want to go horseback riding at the beach, you can absolutely do that. Our outdoor programs takes our students to a different excursion almost every weekend. Um, so I did say that we have a really huge commitment to um, diversity and inclusion. Um, so I did mention becoming an HSI recently, but we also do have centers to help out our students to fit in a little bit more on our campus and find the resources that are really important to every individual. Um, I will point out that we do have a really great first generation student programs. Uh, so we do have a really high graduation rate among our first gen population. Approximately 90% of our first generation students will graduate within four years, which is pretty amazing. Um, if you're an athlete or you just simply like to spectate, um, we are a very competitive university. We have 21 sports that qualify under Division III. Um, very competitive. Like I said, 75% of our sports do rank nationally. Um, our most competitive sports will have to be football, basketball, track and field, um, softball, and baseball. Um, so if you have any you know, interest in playing, um, please do let our coaches know, but you can um, definitely be a well-rounded athlete as well as be a really well-rounded academic. As you can see, our average athlete has a 3.5 GPA on our campus. Um, so like I said, a commitment to housing. Uh, most students will live on campus all four years as we do have a four-year um, housing guarantee. Redlands is a small institution. We have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio with the average class of 18 students. So really great opportunity for you to be able to engage with your professors. The purpose of a liberal arts experience is to be able to have a well-rounded experience, but also to develop some additional skill sets like thinking critically, being able to communicate effectively and being able to write well. Um, so you're able to do that in a small classroom setting. These are some of our programs. Actually, these are all of our programs. We have um, over 40 majors and they're pretty diverse. They range from business to biology, to theater arts, to music. 
Um, so we pretty much have everything underneath the sun. Um, some of our standout majors or programs are going to be the Johnson Center for Integrative Studies where you can create your own major. Um, so if you have any questions about building your own program of study, please do let us know. You can connect with us and I'll provide our information at the end of the presentation or the School of Music. We are the second oldest school of music in the state of California and we do offer a bachelor's of music. Um, we really do value in uh, global experience. So a lot of our students will go abroad, about 54% of them will. Um, so we do have over hundred destinations for you to travel um, and cost of traveling is very similar to when you are on our campus. Um, so just a little bit about the admissions process. We do um, read our applications holistically. Um, so we will take into consideration all the things that you have submitted. Something that's important to note is that University of Redlands is a test optional institution. Um, so no need to submit any test scores. Um, and if you have any questions, please do let us know. This is our contact information and thank you so much. Great, thank you. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from the University of Nevada, Reno. Hi everyone, my name is Julio Leva. I am an admissions and recruitment coordinator for the University of Nevada, Reno. And it's an honor to be here with all of you guys to share a little more about our institution. The University of Nevada Reno is a tier one university. What this means is that we are part of the top 200 schools nationwide. So we're up there with the Yales, your Stanfords, your very prestigious universities. We're providing the same level of education for a fraction of the price. We also recently just received the R1 Carnegie research classification. Um, so there's a lot of research opportunities available for all of our students. Um, and you can definitely be a uh, published researcher by the time you graduate from our university. I do want to go over the admission process just to let you know how simple it is to apply to the university. The application itself typically opens around September 15 of your senior year and the application is completely online. Um, it's one of the easiest college applications you're ever going to submit. There's no letters of recommendation needed, no personal statements, no references, none of that. It should take you 10 minutes or less. Once you submit your application online, you're also going to submit your transcripts. And the courses that you see in, on your screen, those are the only courses that we're going to look into. Um, and if you have that 3.0 academic GPA, you're automatically admitted to our university. We admit every single student that meets this admission requirement. If you don't have your GPA, then we can look into your test scores. So we're looking for either a 22 on the ACT or 1120 on the SAT. Again, if you have any of these requirements, you get direct admission to the university and direct admission to uh, your program of your choice. None of our programs are impacted. So again, you get that straight admission to them. We do have over 140 available that you could choose from. Um, we're very strong when it comes to health sciences. We do have our own school of medicine. Uh, our engineering program is, uh, is part of the top 150 programs nationwide. Our school of journalism is very competitive. We won six Pulitzer Prizes. It's the best prize you can get as a journalist. Um, so it's a very well-rounded university and all of their, their programs are very, very strong. Two of the ones that I do want to highlight is the Nevada Teach Program and the PAC Teach Program. What these programs are, they allow the students essentially to get two degrees for the time and price of one. So if you are interested in STEM, you're going to go for the Nevada Teach Program. This is going to allow you to get your degree within STEM, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, as well as your teaching license. Um, if you are interested in liberal arts, you would go for the PAC Teach Program, and it's essentially the same concept. You would get your degree within liberal arts, like a language, history, geography, or anything like that, as well as your teaching license. And it's just an incredible opportunity that gives you um, a plan A and a plan B, just in case plan A doesn't work out. Um, not only are our academics very strong, but we highly encourage our students to um, use a lot of hands-on learning in the labs and um, internships. A lot of our mechanical engineering students um, and uh, computer science engineers are out there working with huge companies like Apple and Tesla, getting that hands-on experience, like I mentioned, that is so um, important. Um, and a lot of these internships are actually paid. So not only are they getting um, some, not only are they getting hands-on experience, but they're also getting paid for that as well, which is incredible. Our nursing students are doing their clinical hours at Renown, which is the number one hospital here in the state of Nevada, which is incredible. 
Um, and the labs very hands on too as well. I remember I was a student here at this university as well. And one of my favorite labs that I was part of was definitely the anatomy and physiology lab. We do have human cadavers that our students get to utilize and it just helped me um, solidify what I learned in lecture and lab, which was incredible. Um, we are in the northern part of Nevada. We're about four hours away from San Francisco, like two hours away from Sacramento, eight hours away from Las Vegas. So we're nowhere near Las Vegas. Um, but because we're in the very more northern part of Nevada, we do get all four seasons here. Um, and it's just an incredible thing to experience. In the summer, we do have Lake Tahoe about 40 minutes away from our campus. So all of our students are out there enjoying some beach time, uh, paddle boarding, kayaking, all that fun stuff. In the winter, we do get snow on campus too as well. And we are surrounded by mountains. So snowboarding, skiing, all that fun stuff is available for our students as well. On top of being one of the great universities, top tier one, I should say, it's a very affordable university as well. Um, the average cost to attend a tier one university, it's about $34,000 a year. For our Nevada residents, the cost is about $7,400. Um, and we do have scholarships available that can help you cover the cost of that as well. Our presidential level, for example, it's the highest institutional scholarship that we have available. If the student does qualify for that, it will cover your tuition for all four years entirely. Um, if you do really well on your SATs and ACTs, you can also potentially qualify for the National Merit Scholarship. And that's a $16,000 uh, scholarship that our university offers. So we would pay you a lot of money to attend a university if you are a National Merit. We also do have the Nevada Guarantee Program available for our students coming from a low-income family. If you do submit your FAFSA or your IM, Institutional Methodology, so that's just a form that we have available for our DACA or undocumented students, um, and your family income is about 50,000 or less and you are a Nevada resident, you can qualify for this program and it's 9,208, which again would cover your tuition entirely. For my out-of-state students, we do have reduced tuition programs like Nevada Advantage and WUI. WUI is the one that we want, it's gonna give you a higher discount. You do have to be from one of these qualifying states and get one of these degree, uh, one of these um, requirements. So either your GPA, your test score of a 24 or 1160 on the SAT. If you do meet any of these three, you automatically qualify for re this reduced tuition program. And you bring your tuition from about $22,000 a year all the way down to about $10,000 a year. Uh, last but not least, I do wanna share our contact information. If you do have any specific questions um, for any of these departments, feel free to contact them and come visit us as well. We are open for campus tours and we would love to show you everything that we have to offer you here at the University of Nevada, Reno. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you. We do have some time left. So at this point, we're gonna pivot now into our Q&A portion of the session. Um, so I invite all our representatives to go ahead and turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. Hey everyone, Andrea from UCI again. I, you know, I think the most important thing is to find a college that you're going to be happy at. Um, that means a lot of things. That means academics, that means financially, that means extracurriculars, that means location. A college that you're going to be happy at is one you're going to be successful at, regardless of the ranking, regardless of where your friends are going. So find some place you'll be happy and you'll ultimately find your success. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so my piece of advice would just be to um, explore every opportunity. Uh, don't limit yourselves in terms of location or price of tuition. Uh, a lot of people sometimes psych themselves out thinking that it might be too expensive uh, because it's a private school or out of state. Um, if, you're, if the school has the program or degree that you're interested in pursuing, uh, it doesn't hurt to reach out to them to visit if you're able to. Um, because sometimes once it's all said and done and you actually complete your FAFSA, uh, it might be the more affordable um, opportunity for you as well too. So don't limit yourselves in the application process. Uh, wait to see the actual financial aid packages before you make any, uh, any, any big decisions. Hi everyone. Um, I would say just to piggyback off of the others, I would say, you know, 
ask yourself where you see yourself. Do you see yourself living in this location for four plus years? Do you see yourself involved with this community? Um, I would also, you know, look into if you have a specific program in mind that you're interested in, look at schools that um, excel in those particular programs. I think all of us here pointed out today some of our majors that, you know, the schools particularly excel in. So, so take a look around. Um, and yeah, like, I think it was Keith said, or sorry, I don't know if it's Keith, um, said that, you know, make sure i forgot my train of thought i'm so sorry um look around don't limit yourself and see ask yourself if you can live there my biggest advice for students looking into college is to get to know your admission representatives from the different schools that you're attending uh, they are the experts for their school and for the application process so if you have any questions about um, what majors they offer, what the application requirements, deadlines, uh, they're the best people to know. And some schools use uh, things like uh, demonstrated interest as part of their um, application process. So it's a really good idea to get to know who your admission rep is. Um, I think everybody has said some really great things. And so I just wanna say yes, yes, and yes to everything. Um, but in addition to that, um, if you're able to visit the institution, um, definitely do that. And I know there's a lot of questions right now um, due to COVID, but I think things are looking up. And I think a lot of places, I think a lot of my colleagues have shared that their institution is open to visitors. And I would say to take it even further than that, make sure that you're asking the student questions because admissions counselors, uh, we all know the institution really well, or you know, I think a lot of us attended our institutions. I know I attended University of Redlands, so we have that experience, but the student who is currently there has insight as to what is happening right here, right now. Um, so ask questions, absolutely, but also make sure that you're asking questions of your tour guides. I mean, my fellow presenters almost like said everything that I was about to say. So it's rough being the last one, but I could definitely agree that you should not be afraid to ask us any questions at all. Um, we're literally bored in our offices waiting for you to reach out to us and we're ready to assist every single one of you guys. It's really easy to find our information online and stuff like that as well. But if you have any questions or anything like that related about anything, really, we're eager to answer those questions. Do not be terrified. Awesome, and I couldn't agree more. All great advice shared. Um, we'll try to uh, go with another one here. So we'll do this one really rapid fire. But the next question here is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, again, we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. My favorite event is the Guinness World Record um, uh, attempt each year. We didn't attempt on this last year in COVID, but we've made seven attempts and it's just this it's big, it's huge, it's really fun, that's it. Uh, for us, uh, for myself would be, uh, we have a huge pool party uh, that's called Oasis. So during uh, the spring, uh, everybody that's on campus will basically go to our athletic pool and just I can have fun music, drinks, uh, and just kind of have a good time. Um, my favorite event on campus is our annual fashion design show. So our fashion design students actually do, uh, they produce the fashion show and have a runway and um, build a professional set, hire models. It's, it's really cool to see. My favorite campus event is called Let It Snow. So being in Southern California, we don't have any naturally occurring snow, but uh, in our in our Kingsman Park that you'll see behind me, uh, we have we bring snow on campus and students sled down it, uh, make snowmen, and even have a um, appearance by Mr. and Mrs. Claus every year. Alrighty, so instead of a favorite tradition or a favorite event, it's gonna be a tradition. So University of Redlands, we are the Bulldogs. And we actually have a live mascot. Her name is Addie. Our current mascot's name is Addie. Um, she's the first female mascot at University of Redlands. We've had one since 1918. Um, so we've always had a cute dog running around at our football games and things like that. Um, so she's pretty fun. She's also on social media. She's pretty big on TikTok and Instagram. So if you want to check her out, you definitely should. We are a D1 school, so we play the highest level of college sports. And my favorite tradition is the Wolf Run. Um, so essentially what it is at our first home game, all of our incoming freshmen get to line up on one side of the field 
and they all get to rush it and we all cheer them on as they're rushing it. And that's just our way of welcoming them into the wolf pack. And it's just an incredible feeling to do it yourself. Um, they give you all kinds of swag items and stuff like that. So you can always be repping the wolf pack. Nice. Uh, our presenters did a great job. Thanks uh, for answering that question. It was really thorough, um, but fitting that time in. So I appreciate that. Um, and I have to say, that's always my favorite question. I love hearing about the different events and traditions on campus. Um, I think that's what truly makes every school unique. And so um, I heard some fun ones tonight. So hope you all did too. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you to each of you for joining us. Um, as we close, we'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is greatly appreciated. And this session again is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. Again, that's at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. Again, thank you all and have a great night.